Hi everyone. Today I'm going to cover the undamped critical speed map and how it is analyzed and interpreted. To give you a better example, I'm going to use a rotor layout from a very interesting paper written by engineers in Dresserand in 1996. Please note that Dresserand company was bought by Siemens around 2015. This paper provides the test result and the rotor dynamic analysis on the barrel type compressors as you could see on the right side figures. These barrel type compressors are widely used in oil and gas industry. Based on the given geometry and dimension of the paper, you could actually model the rotor into the commercial software. This compressor has 4 inch journal bearings and the bearing span is about 63 inches. Here is the photo of the actual rotor with the dummy impellers described in the paper. Here is the modeled rotor based on the information given in the paper. And I'm currently using the Excel rotor to model the rotor bearing system. Based on the model, the expected rotor weight is 252 kilograms. You could look into my previous videos to learn how to model the rotor into the rotor dynamic software. Here is the undamped critical speed map. As its name indicates that it is only a map which gives a useful information but not a complete picture. Left figure is the undamped critical speed map from the paper and the right figure is the map from my rotor dynamic model. In the figures, the x-axis is the bearing support stiffness and the y-axis is the critical speed. And the both axes are in log-log scale. As you could see in the both figures, they look relatively close. So this indicates that my modeled geometry resembles quite well with the model ran by the Dresser Rand engineers in 1996. But my model seem to have higher critical speed than the values in the paper. This indicates that my rotor is modeled slightly stiffer. This difference might be due to not accounting for the undercut in between the dummy impellers. These undercuts will make the rotor flexible and reduce the critical speeds. As described in the paper, these undercuts are intentional in the rotor design because the purpose of this paper is to make the rotor flexible to better understand the implication of squeeze film damper design affecting the rotor dynamics. Going back to the critical speed map, this map provides the information needed to understand the basic response behavior of the rotor. For example, it provides a preliminary estimate of the critical speeds and their sensitivity to the support dynamics. In addition, the influence of imbalance distribution can be assessed using the resulting mode shapes. So if you look at the figure with increasing x-axis, the bearing stiffness, the critical speed increases and the rotor motion will be more of a bending mode shape. And at the low bearing stiffness, the rotor motion will be more of a rigid body mode shapes. To understand better how the rotor motion looks like with respect to the bearing support stiffness, you could simply run the program. To run the program, you simply select the critical speed or bearing support stiffness of your interest. For an example purposes, let's select the bearing support stiffness of 10 to the 6 Newton per meter and then click mode shape at the command tab above. The program spits out the mode shapes of the rotor at the bearing stiffness that you selected. The first two are the rigid body modes and the rest are the bending modes. The first critical mode shape is rigid body cylindrical mode, or others call it bounce mode. As you can see in the figure, the motion at the shaft's each end is in phase. 
The second critical speed mode shape is rigid body conical mode, or others call it rocking mode. As you could see in the figure, the motion at the shaft's each end is out of phase. For bearing support stiffness ranging from small to 10 to the 7th Newton per meter, the first two modes are essentially straight line increasing in the log-log scale. These two lines represent rigid body modes and these modes tend to show at a low bearing support stiffness. Please note that this is undamped critical speed map. If you have sufficient damping, the rigid modes can be well suppressed. The third and fourth critical speed mode shapes looks like this. These mode shapes are called bending mode or free free mode. These modes are relatively unaffected by the range of bearing support stiffness. Okay, now let's look into the mode shapes for higher bearing support stiffness of 10 to the 10th Newton per meter. Here are the mode shapes for the rotor at the higher bearing support stiffness that you selected. As you could see here, the rotor mode shape is no longer rigid mode. For a higher bearing support stiffness, the first critical speed mode shape is bending mode. And as you could see, there is a restricted motion at the bearing support location. So now going back to the undamped critical speed map, say if your compressor has maximum continue operating speed of 10,000 RPM, and you have a bearing support stiffness of 10 to the 7th Newton per meter, then when you spin up the rotor from zero speed to maximum operating speed of 10,000 RPM, you will encounter three separate critical speed at around 2,000 RPM, 5,000 RPM, and 9,200 RPM, which are first and second and third critical speeds respectively. And you could anticipate the mode shape at each critical speed. If you look at the graph, your third critical speed coincides with the maximum operating speed, which you can expect a large vibration around the maximum operating speed. It is recommended to avoid running the machine at the critical speed for a long period of time because it will induce large motion. But if you could provide enough damping from the bearing support, you could substantially reduce the motion of the rotor while passing the critical speeds. Today, we cover the concept of undamped critical speed map. And there are a lot of papers that you could reverse engineer the model to learn and understand the rotor dynamics better by yourself. This kind of exercise is highly recommended for young engineers. In my next video, we'll cover the damped natural frequency map and how to analyze and interpret the result. Thanks for watching.